This is the three-in-one kidney model. Um, we'll get this panel first. Okay. Uh, in this kidney model, we have this outer layer right here. That's the renal capsule, otherwise known as the fibrous capsule. Um, inside, the kidney has two major layers. This layer here. is the renal cortex. And the other layer here, the inner layer, here is the renal medulla, where the renal cortex um, pushes into the renal medulla. Those regions is ca are called the renal columns. So renal column here is part of the cortex that pushes into the renal medulla. Okay, then producing these structures here, called the renal pyramids. They do look like little pyramids. And each pyramid has a structure that looks like a base here, and an apex right here. Okay. Um, this region of the uh, apex region of the renal pyramid is called the renal papilla. Um, and then also what you're going to see um, are the following features. Um, these little circles here are renal corpuscles. Okay. Um, the urine is going to be produced as um, blood is going to be filtered, um, and then it goes through this, these uh, structures in here. This is a nephron, and this is the collecting duct. Okay, so the urine will be produced here, um, and then the urine will then empty here in the renal papilla, and then into this cavity right here, space in here, represented by these tubes, and this will be called the minor calyx. Okay. The area where the minor calyces um, join together is called the major calyx. Okay. And then right this area right here of the tube is called the renal pelvis. Renal pelvis. And this renal pelvis. And then right here, this is the ureter. Okay, so then urine comes out to the renal pelvis, to the ureter, and down to the urinary bladder. So now let's take a look at the blood vessels of the kidney. Um, this red vessel right here, this is the renal artery. The renal artery carries in oxygenated blood, carrying um, blood that needs to be uh, filtered, so there's a lot of waste in that blood. Um, so the renal artery comes in and it will then uh, divide or branch into these shoulder arteries here. So these branches of the renal artery is referred to as the segmental artery. Part of the segmental artery. The segmental artery then divides or branches to form these arteries here, coming up within the renal column. These arteries are called the interlobar arteries. The interlobar arteries then uh, wrap around the base of the pyramid, and these arteries are called the arcuate arteries. The arcuate arteries then branches, and the branch that goes into the renal cortex. These arteries are called the interlobular arteries. The interlobular arteries then branches, and the small branch that comes off of it is called the afferent arterio. You see a larger version of this in the next panel. Okay. Um, and then it branches some more. So we'll see the uh, rest of the arteries in the uh, middle panel. Um, then the uh, blood will then uh, be filtered within the uh, renal corpuscle here. Okay. Uh, then deoxygenated blood will then flow back into the veins. So these blue vessels are called veins. Okay. And so the veins have the same names as the uh, arteries. So these right here running along the renal cortex region, um, these veins are called the interlobular vein. The interlobular vein then empties and connects to the arcuate vein. The arcuate vein then connects to the interlobar vein. The interlobar vein then empties into the uh, renal vein. Yeah. And the renal vein then empties into the inferior vena cava. Okay, so now we're going to look at this middle panel here. And this one is an enlargement of this area here. So again, this layer here of the kidney is called the renal capsule. Okay, this is 
brown tissue layer covering the kidney. Okay. And then this major layer here of the kidney um, is the renal cortex. And out here, this is the renal medulla. And the renal medulla, this particular part of the renal medulla is the renal pyramid. Okay. So uh, we're going to look at the internal features of the, uh, the kidney. So it contains the basic uh, filtering unit of the kidney called the nephron. And the nephron is composed of here, this is called the renal corpuscles. Okay. And the renal corpuscle is part of the nephron. Then the other parts are the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. Then the uh, loop of Henle. Then the uh, distal convoluted tubule. Okay. So all this is part of the nephron. The renal corpuscle cross-section of that you see is composed of two structures, composed of this here, this is blood vessels called the glomerulus, and this yellow portion here, that's the Bowman's capsule. Okay. And the Bowman's capsule is connected to the proximal convoluted tubule. Right? This tube right here, this is the collecting duct. The uh, nephron connects to the collecting duct. Okay the distal convoluted tubule. Uh, blood vessels. Um, their blood vessels are the following. Um, right here, the one going up, that is the interlobular artery. So the interlobular arteries. Go back and say that these here are the arcuate arteries. So this is the arcuate artery. Branches to form the interlobular artery. The interlobular artery then branches this branch here is called the afferent arterial. The afferent arterial then forms the glomerulus of the renal corpuscle. And then coming out on the other end is the um, efferent or efferent arterial, the other red blood vessel. So better view is over here. Okay. So this branch right here, um, this right here is the afferent arterial coming in to form the glomerulus which is inside. You can see it here. Um, and then coming out, that blood vessel is called the efferent or efferent arterial. Okay. This is to form the peritubular capillaries. And then um, here, this is the interlobular vein. Okay. And right here, this is the arcuate vein. Okay. Um, let's go back and talk about the nephron. Um, you notice that there is one nephron like here, and there's another nephron here. This nephron here is longer than this nephron. The long nephron has a longer loop of Henle dipping into, further into the renal pyramid. Um, this particular nephron is called the juxtamedullary nephron. This nephron here that is shorter, this is called the cortical nephron. Okay. Um, let's go back and also talk about the parts of the loop of Henle. Um, parts of the loop of Henle's are the descending thin segment of the loop of Henle, the ascending thin segment of the loop of Henle, and then the thick segment of the loop of Henle. Um, notice that the loop of Henle, neither in both the cortical nephron and the juxtamedullary nephron, um, the loop of Henle is found within dipping into the renal pyramids, which you're going to see in the renal cortex region. Um, is going to be the, uh, the renal corpuscles, okay? and also the uh, proximal convoluted tubule, and the distal convoluted tubule, and uh, parts of the uh, collecting duct. The most of the collecting duct is going to be found in the renal pyramid. Let's look at the last panel. Um, this is a magnification of this area right here. Okay, of the renal corpuscles, the blood vessels around it, and the tubes. This is the distal convoluted tubule. Okay. And um, this here, this entire thing, is representing the renal corpuscle. So will be representing this right here. Okay. Um, this blood vessel right here is the afferent arterial. Okay. The afferent arterial then um, forms the glomerulus, 
has these red blood vessels here. The yellow is uh, are representing a type of cells called the podocytes, and the podocytes wraps around the glomerulus to help form the filtration unit. Um, then coming out of the glomerulus is the efferent or efferent arterial. Note that the afferent arterial is a little larger size in terms of size of the vessel um, and the uh, diameter of the lumen of the vessel, the blood vessel diameter. Um, here the blood vessel is going to be a little small in terms of diameter wise. Um, now let's look at the renal corpuscles again. You can see the renal corpuscle is composed of the glomerulus, that's the uh, red blood vessels here, and the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule has two layers, one here, the outer one, okay? And these are the cells that make up the outer layer, okay? And you have an inner layer that's made of these cells called the podocytes, and the podocytes wrap around the glomerulus. So on this side, the podocytes are drawn in and painted onto the glomerulus. So you can see the podocytes on this side. Here, you don't see the, uh, the podocytes as well. It's not colored in. Um, so the P Bowman's capsule is then created by this layer here. Okay, this is the parietal layer. So this is the parietal layer. Okay, and this here is the, the podocytes then form the visceral layer. Okay, of the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule then um, there's a lumen um, that is created between the. Uh, layers that are uh, produced by the podocytes and the uh, parietal layer. So there's a little bit here. Okay. Then the uh, blood that's filtered um, goes out from here and out here. So then this is be clean blood. And then um, the liquid that the filtrate will then enter into here. And so this part of the nephron is called the, uh, the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule is composed of simple uh, cuboidal cells with microvilli uh, for maximum absorption. Let's go up here and talk about another structure here. Okay, you can see that there are modified cells of the um, distal convoluted tubule and modified cells of the um, afferent arterial. These modified cells here, they look more columnar in shape than these here that are cuboidal. These cells that are modified to have a columnar shape, these are called the macula densa cells, and these cells here are called the juxtaglomerular cells. Together, these two cells form a structure called the juxtaglomerular apparatus.